Good job, Joe. Thank you. Okay. So we are now going to move on to paragraph six. Already? Yeah. Wow. That's, that was fast. The narrator is an alcoholic. His alcoholism leads him to be violent towards kitties. Good, good analogy, John. His animals, and he even said that he used um, intemperate language to his wife and personal violence. 
So we can say to his animals and his wife. He cut out Pluto's eye. No. That was his favorite pet, too. That was his favorite. He's too drunk. That's sad. Oh, she put a frowny face. You could draw a cat with one eye, but no. I'm not. I'm not really no. No, that much of an artist. No thanks. Bailey, what's your Wow. Okay, what words did you highlight that you didn't know in paragraph six and seven? What words did you highlight? Atrocity. What other words? I'm pretty sure there's some words in paragraph six we don't know. Oh. Um. Intemperance. Intemperance. Instrumentality. Wait. It's essentially like the use of. Oh, okay. Oh yeah. Do you know what temperament means? Mad. Temperament, general temperament, is like your mannerisms, your personality. Um, mob, maltreated, what is that? Badly treated. Wait, which one did I say? Any other oh. words we need to highlight? What about malevolence? What about peevish? I don't know how to pronounce that word. It's like, it's like, it's above it, and it's bolded. Possess? Oh, no, I don't know. Struck. Oh, that's a good one. Struck. 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 Okay, so let's write down the words that we're going to define. Temperance, lack of restraint, 
Maltreating, treating poorly. The prefix mal means bad. Peevish, easily irritated. An atrocity is a cruel. What do you think malevolence means by looking at it in the context? Evil. Like, wait, where is malevolence? Mo it's in paragraph malevolence. seven. Read the sentence in paragraph seven. What do you think? Where, which sentence is that? Is that after the uh, It feels right after the rest of the Oh, okay. <clears throat> Maybe like you. So you could say it's like malice, What's malice? or hatefulness. Oh. We're going to listen to paragraphs 8 and 9. Remember to follow along while the voice is reading. Follow along and highlight any words that you do not know. When reason returned with the morning, when I had slipped off the fumes of the night's debauch, I experienced a sentiment half of horror, half of remorse for the crime of which I had been guilty. But it was, at best, a feeble and equivocal feeling and the soul remained untouched. I again plunged into excess and soon drowned in wine all memory of the deed. In the meantime, the cat slowly recovered. The socket of the lost eye presented, it is true, a frightful appearance, but he no longer appeared to suffer any pain. He went about the house as usual, but as might be expected, fled in extreme terror at my approach. I had so much of my old heart left as to be at first grieved by this evident dislike on the part of a creature which had once so loved me. But this feeling soon gave place to irritation. And then came, as if to my final and irrevocable overthrow, the spirit of perverseness. Of this spirit, philosophy takes no account. Yet I am not more sure that my soul lives than I am that perverseness is one of the primitive impulses of the human heart one of the indivisible primary faculties or sentiments which give direction to the character of man. Who has not, a hundred times, found himself committing a vile or a silly action for no other reason than because he knows he should not? Have we not a perpetual inclination in the teeth of our best judgment to violate that which is law merely because we understand it to be such? This spirit of perverseness, I say, came to my final overthrow. It was this unfathomable longing of the soul to vex itself, to offer violence to its own nature, to do wrong for the wrong's sake only, that urged me to continue and finally to consummate the injury I had inflicted upon the unoffending brute. One morning, in cool blood, I slipped a noose about its neck and hung it to the limb of a tree. Hung it with the tears streaming from my eyes and with the bitterest remorse of my heart hung it because I knew that it had loved me, and because I felt it had given me no reason of offense. Hung it because I knew that in so doing I was committing a sin, a deadly sin that would so jeopardize my immortal soul as to place it, if such a thing were possible, even beyond the reach of the infinite mercy of the most merciful and most terrible God. It's a cow, bro. Why? What did he... What did he just do? He just hung the cat. And what was 
his reasoning. Because they're he loved him. Oh my god. Why don't you keep him yeah. alive if you loved him? Because he loved him. No, he loved him. It's like that yeah. meme. Yeah. If I can't have you, she's nobody again. But he just told us that they weren't having a cat anymore. Like he waited long enough so the cat was fine. I mean, and then he gave it more pain. Yeah. So, does his logic make sense? No, of course not. Um, let's do our objective summary real quick, and then we'll go back and talk a little bit more. So, no, my cats are angels. I feel for the cat head on the angels with claws. Yeah. Clearly, the most basic fact is that he hung his cat, he killed the cat, and we need to include why. So his reasoning, like we said, so he gives us a couple reasons why he did this. What's the first reason? Because the cat loved him. Yeah. Oh, they put we we're putting reasons like that could be your inference, Reagan. You could infer that maybe if his wife loves him, that could happen. So his first reason was because the cat loved him. Wait, I have an inference. What's your inference? He's gonna hang himself next to the cat. Bad. Oh, that's yeah. how he's gonna die. Oh, so going yes. back to the text. And they could be roaming the earth, close with the cat. Oh my god. Underline, <laughs> underline those because. See, he says, because I knew that it had loved me, because I felt it had given me no reason of offense, and because I knew I was committing a sin. What does that second one sound like? And where's the third one? What does the second reason sound like? It sounds like a teenager. It sounds like a teenager. It does? Oh. Didn't... Didn't our narrator in the Telltale Heart say that the old man had done no wrong to him? Oh. He said that I love the old man. And he said, I love the old man. He had done no wrong to me. So we can make a connection to the Telltale Heart right there. Um. So we need to include the second reason. Why would you kill an innocent cat? Because he's crazy. He's like the other guy. Because the cat loved him. So what near what inference could you make about why our narrator became uncomfortable with the fact that the cat loved him? Because he didn't love himself. Because he's got commitment issues. Yeah, Reagan just said because he didn't love himself anymore. Maybe he was uncomfortable with the idea of being loved. That's, That's the same kind of thing. Deep, but. Still crazy, but gives you a rationale or a reason inside his brain, even though his brain is illogical, right? So we have the three reasons why he killed Pluto. What words did you highlight? What words did you highlight? It's the one that's like, it's like in all counts. Perverseness. Doesn't that mean like, it's not We need to underline another sentence that he makes about perverseness because he makes a specific claim. He says, the spirit of perverseness is one of the primitive impulses of the human heart. And then he says, um, it gives direction to the character of man. What claim is he making there? 
He says, who has not a hundred times found himself committing a vile or silly action for no other reason than because he knows he should not? You do something stupid because you know you shouldn't do the stupid thing, but you do it anyways. But that's the claim he's making, right? Middle school people do that a lot. You pull the chair out from under your friend, even though you know it's a stupid thing to do and could get you in trouble. Oh, that's so I've done that so many times. Are you going to do it again? Okay. Miss Paper, watch this. She's about to hit me with the paper. Oh, yeah. You hit your friend with objects, even though you know you're not supposed to. Just because you know it's the wrong thing to do. Not once. And you find it funny. Not twice. Yes. Not, not three times. Yeah. More like a million. So he's making a claim that human beings do the wrong thing, a vile or a silly action, for no reason other than because you know you shouldn't. And that makes you want to do it more. Does that claim make sense a little bit? Maybe not to the level of killing a cat, but you get the point he's making, right? Okay, what other words did you highlight? I know we're getting short on time. We got perverseness, broke. Uh, deep thoughts. Yep. Paragraph eight. So those three words that we highlighted, you have the definitions indulgence or something that's excessive. Perverseness is unacceptable behavior in spite of a consequence. Doing the wrong thing. Perverse with an S. Feeble is weak or lacking strength. Once you have those three definitions, then you're good to start packing up, okay? Where's feeble? Like, Wait, like, what is what is con consummate mean? Like, um, to bring to completion, essentially. Can I staple these papers together? No, like falling out. Yeah, you can staple it. That's fine. Thank. You. Consummate means like complete. Why? I know you're I know. I'm proud of this. 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 I'
We are truly great. We're almost at high school.